Greetings to you, brothers and sisters. God has given us a wonderful day today. Especially in the evening time. We greet every one of you, and especially the guests are here today. We want to take a time for our And this would be uh, a um, time that we would have before our um, Christmas service. В святій книзі Біблії є написані чудові слова. І один із апостолів, який називався Павло, він говорить, як настало виповнення часу, це четвертий розділ, четвертий вірш. Як настало виповнення часу, Бог послав свого сина, що родився від жони, та став під законом, щоб викупити підзаконних, щоб усиновлення ми прийняли. А що ви сини, Бог послав у наші серця духа сина свого, що ним викликує Ава Отче. That we might receive the full rights of sons, because you are sons, God sent the Spirit of His Son into the into our hearts, the Spirit who calls out Abba Father. А ми завжди живемо в часі. We always live in time. І кожен раз на від сьогоднішнє служіння ми перенесли, ми говоримо на час будемо мати раніше. And even today we have our union service one hour earlier. І коли прийшов той час, ми починаємо наше служіння, нашу зустріч. І Бог говорить все, і Він має свій час. І Він настільки точно все поступає, що Він ніколи не запізнюється. І він ніколи не помиляється. І був час, коли люди чекали давно приходу Месії. Але його не було. І в один вечір, коли пастухи пасли свою отару, і, можливо, вони говорили про великі діла, про славу, яку колись мав Ізраїль, And maybe they were talking about uh, the big, wonderful works of God and about the glory that Israel had before. And all of a sudden, they saw a um, vision that was not earthly. Великий хор ангелів явився і почав співати «Слава Вишніх Богу на висоті мир і в людях добра воля». A big chorus of angels had um, appeared and was singing uh, і після того пастухи всі були в страху. Вони їм кажуть, не лякайтеся. Бо сьогодні в Давидовому місці народився Спаситель Ісус Христос. І вони йдуть, лишають всі ці свої отари, вони спішать туди в Іфлеєм, щоб подивитися на того, хто народився. Прийшов час, і він прийшов на цю землю. І ми на сьогоднішній день не просто живемо в безнадійному стані. Але ми живемо в тому часі, ми чекаємо приходу Господа Ісуса Христа, який прийде знову на землю. І Він прийде, щоб восстановити своє царство, 
щоб забрати людей, які сьогодні живуть в великих переживаннях, проблемах, в труднощах, в своє царство. І він сьогодні нам говорить, що коли прийде час, то ми знову почуємо цей чудовий голос. Ми сьогодні маємо прекрасний вечір. We have a beautiful evening today. Щоб ще раз послухати про його чудове народження. To listen about his birth again. Про його спасіння, котре він звершив для людей. About his salvation that he has done for people. І просто разом прославити його святе ім'я. And together to praise his holy name. Я думаю, що всі ми є тут люди, котрі ми любимо Крисмас. I think every one of us. People today love Christmas. This is the first Christmas time for our family. These are holidays for our families. We have a Christmas time in our churches, especially. We have special and holiday season in our churches as well, and everything is. That services are very special. І сьогодні в нас є прекрасний чудовий час вечірнього служіння. And today we have a beautiful time of evening service. Я просто хотів би ще раз вас привітати з Різдвом Христовим. I'd like to greet you with Christ's birth. З наступаючим. That's coming. Ми не знаємо точно дня народження. We don't know the exact day of але богослови і історики зупинилися на цій даті, що це було 29 децембер. 25. І ми сьогодні вітаємо вас наступаючим святом Різдва Христового. Я хотів би вас благословити цей вечір сьогодні. І попросити для всіх вас Божого благословіння, щоб була благословена наша країна, в котрій ми живемо, щоб було благословене керівництво і правильно керувало нашою державою, щоб були благословені ваші сім'ї, щоб благословені ваші діти і все майбутнє. І тому ми маємо добрий час і добру нагоду завжди молитися. Я би хотів запросити вас, давайте ми встанемо і помолимо. Our Lord Jesus Christ, whose birthday we will celebrate next week. 
I think most of us know the Christmas story, and um, just this evening and tonight, we will follow it. Through our songs, scripture readings, and the music um, that we're going to play, we want to bring the honor, glory, and adoration to our dearest Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He left his majestic throne to share with us pain, sorrows, and troubles of human life, to take our sins and inequities and die for us on the cross. So let's give, give back to him th that what is his. Glory, honor, praise, and worship and adoration. Sing, pray, and enjoy music with us. And Merry Christmas. Let us bow down and worship. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for He is our God. And we invite you to sing our first song with us together, O Come All Ye Faithful. Let's stand. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and she wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and she laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the end.
Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace, goodwill towards men. Let's all stand and sing, Angels We Have Heard on High.
would like to sing a song. And the uh, second verse, there's words, What have I to offer to the heaven's king? I will bring my life, my love, my all. He, uh, Jesus brought us peace, peace on earth, here with us, at your feet we fall. Number four.
Slava Bohu. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. Now I'd like for all of us to stand and sing the next song together, When They Saw the Star. among the rulers of Judah, for out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people, Israel.
Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Святая нить, я с кого светят соли, ты щеничный народился Христос. Свет потопал греху тебе законни, та Божий сын. Нам спасения принес, надея счастья, сердце наполняя, надбив и небом же зашла зоря.
Praise God, brothers and sisters, and good evening to all, everyone who is here tonight. Thank you for joining us for this evening. As you already know or heard, the theme of our gathering while we're here tonight is for one reason, to call each other to come and to adore him, Christ the Lord. To adore, which means to deeply love and respect someone. If you grew up in this country or grew up in any other country that celebrates Christmas, this is not something new for you. You probably have done this many times throughout your life. Where you heard the good news, where you attended some kind of church service or a Christmas program, when you gathered with friends and family, when you exchanged gifts, this is not something new that you hear to honor, to adore, to love, to respect, to worship the name of Jesus Christ. And as uh, I was preparing for tonight and just thinking about this one word, to adore, a question was in my mind. If we live in a society that we have been for many years calling each other to adore the name of Christ, to adore one another, how come we struggle more and more every year to just simply respect, to love those who are around us in our life? And this idea to adore Christ is not something new. It's not something that has been someone came up in the last 10 or 20 or even 100 years. This is something that has been happening for hundreds and hundreds of years, for a couple millennia already. Now, I would just like to look at a few passages, and many of them we heard uh, maybe today in the morning or even today, that really just show that there were people in Christ's life when he was born that came to truly adore him. Luke, who is one of the gospel writers, he was also a physician and a great historian, he records, he gives us a narrative about the birth of Christ. And he talks about the shepherds that at one point in, um, in their life, during the night an angel appeared to them, and he proclaimed that there was a baby born, a Messiah, a Savior of the world. And the response of these shepherds was, and it's written in Luke chapter 2, verse 16 and 17, it says that these shepherds, they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe laying in the manger. Now when they had seen him, meaning Jesus, they had widely, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. Then Luke also describes that a few days later, when Joseph and Mary came to the temple, Simeon, who was a well-respected and old man in Israel, someone who people looked up to, we don't know a lot of details about him, but it says that when he saw Joseph and Mary bringing Jesus to the temple, he took Jesus in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation. Then a few verses down, Luke 2, 38, Anna, she was a prophet, and she also gave thank to the Lord and spoke to him, spoke of him to all those who looked for redemption in Jerusalem. Then Matthew, he also describes in his gospel there were wise men that came and they traveled for a long time to come and adore Jesus Christ, to bring gifts, to worship him, to admire him. And what's even more important, it's not that only Jesus was adored when he was a baby. Uh, that something happened throughout his life. And more importantly, when he was about 30 years old and when he was baptized in water, when he came out of the water after baptism, there was a voice from heaven that said, you are my beloved son, and you I am well pleased. A few years later, after Jesus uh, transfigured himself before his apostles on a mountain, the same voice of God the Father was saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased, hear him. We see that throughout Jesus' life, people adored him. So this is not a new idea why we're here today and why we gathered here to adore him. 
But that brings us back to the same question that I started with. If we are living in society that celebrates Christmas every single year, when millions and millions of people celebrate and spend billions of dollar during, dollars during the uh, Christmas holidays and Christmas season, when every year we have New Year's resolution where we call ourselves to become better, to treat others with respect and dignity and love and adore others throughout our life, the question then remains still, why? Why is it so difficult and why there's so little adoration that's happening in our life towards one another? And if you might disagree or don't know what I'm talking about, all you have to do is just turn the evening news and see what is going on in our world and ask the same question. What happened to love and respect of those who are around us? Thinking about this question and trying to answer it for myself, I narrowed it down to one thing. I think really everything comes down to the idea or what your understanding is, what is the source of adoring somebody? What is the source, what motivates you to adore someone else? Where does this desire come from? Why do we need to be adored in our life? And why do we desire to adore somebody else who is next to us? And I think we will all agree that there is no meaning, there is no purpose to our life unless there's other people in our life that we can share a life with. If we don't have relationships, then we're lonely people. And one of the greatest and worst punishments to humanity is to be locked up somewhere all by yourself, to be lonely, and not to be adored by somebody else or adore those who are in your life. What is the point of a birthday party unless there is a person that you're celebrating their life? Yes, it's a great party. Yes, we can have a lot of fun. Yes, we can have uh, great things happening. But unless there is a person on which we concentrate, who we adore, if there isn't anyone who adores us in our life, then life becomes very pointless and meaningless. What's the point of graduation unless there's graduates? What is the point of a wedding unless there's a wedding couple? Everything comes down to people in our lives that we want to admire, adore, love, and respect, and we want to feel the same way towards us. Unfortunately, and it's very clear that we can see this in the last few years, uh, we live in society that's very polarized. Many people are just split on their ideologies, their views, their beliefs, and it's just uh, more evident more and more every single day. And if we start talking about the idea of where does this source of adoring one another and to feel adored in our life come from, there's also people that are very on the very opposite sides of this topic. And some people that I talk to, some people that I, uh, I'm friends with actually, they have very different view or very different idea than I do. A lot of them, they would say that really to adore, to love, to respect, each other in society is just a social achievement. It's just something that our society came, came up with because this is good for everyone else. Most of those people, they would also share or believe or they would view this world uh, from a naturalistic point of view and they would say that we just evolved from smaller organisms and we are where we are because this is good for us and we just evolved to be like this and this idea is nothing more than just a social idea or social achievement that we have, uh, that we, we came up with. Uh, I would strongly disagree with that because unless somebody is your family member, unless you're really interested in someone who would live after you, who, will, who would uh, continue your family tree, uh, evolution doesn't offer any purpose to love, to care for somebody else. Evolution would never teach somebody or develop somebody's mindset to share in the time of need with someone who doesn't have which, what they need for, for life, for survival. Because it goes against the theory, against the idea of survival of the fittest. If we would say that, well, this is just, you know, a social achievement that we agree to adore, to love, to respect one another, I would again disagree for the reason that I already stated about if you just look at the news today, it's not something that our society lives by. It's not something that society promotes or, um, you know, 
holds highly to adore somebody else. I mean, the headlines in news today is corruption, sexual harassment, racism, bullying, and many other things. This is what the society shows us where we are, what we achieved as just humans with sinful nature. And you want to ask yourself after watching the news, where does the word adore fit in our vocabulary? Where does this idea come from? Where is this spirit of Christmas if we like to celebrate this season as a whole country? Some people that I talk to, they also like to suggest, well, look, we live in a country where we have people from all over the world, different cultures, different beliefs, different religions, and we all kind of manage to be here because, you know, we have this idea that we are all equal and we respect each other and everyone has the same chance for life, liberty, and happiness. But whoever is trying to use that uh, to defend their idea that, you know, to adore somebody really comes from society needs to just look into the, these words that they often quote and look at the source and what was the true meaning of who wrote them. And these words that were written by the founding fathers of this country that really did establish a good foundation and that's why we can live together in harmony with so many people who are different than us. But what they wrote more specifically or exactly was that they believed they had a principle that all men are created. They're not evolved, they're created equal. That they are endowed by their creator with certain rights and these rights are to liberty, to life, and to pursuit of happiness. We, many of us who attend this church, we come from a different country, and there was a different ideology there. Nobody cared about your views, nobody cared about your life, your liberty, or your happiness. And if we look at societies that are much older than the United States of America around the world, who banned, uh, who banned uh, huge societies and empires on this earth for many, many years, they haven't achieved the idea that let's respect each other. You, you can see what's going on in the Middle East. You can see what's going on in other, other parts of the world where people lived there for many, many years. And they did not come up with this great idea. Let's just love, respect, and adore one another. I believe that this desire to adore and this need to adore it's a divine one. It's the one that comes from a creator of the universe. It comes from God who has created all of us. And he put in this desire for fellowship, for relationships. He admires us. He adores us. And with that transforming our life, we can do the same to other people. As we read some of these scriptures about the birth of Christ and how people were treating him, we can see that it was God the Father, God who was behind all of this um, this, this honoring and worshiping and adoring his son who came into this world. If we read the scriptures, we can see the idea of Trinity, where there is God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, different, yet there is no conflict. There is respect and love. There is the unity that philosophers for centuries were trying to figure out, and they couldn't. How can this be achieved? We see this in the scriptures, in the Trinity of God. If we see at other scriptures, we see that God is looking at us and he's saying that you are wonderfully and fearfully made. I love you. I adore you. Scriptures say that God loved us so much that he was willing to give his only son for those who believe in him would not perish but have eternal love, life. Scriptures say that he loved us while we were still sinners. That's the source of true adoration in our life. I'm not sure if you, uh, if you follow social media much. I personally don't, but it was really hard to miss a story that happened last week and really kind of shows the idea of our society and, and really what is happening. And a lot of times, unfortunately, with the wrong idea, a wrong source of what it means to adore somebody, uh, we start acting in the opposite way, and that is to bully each other. So about a week ago, a little more than a week ago, there was a little boy, maybe you know him, if you, how many of you know the name of uh, Keaton Jones? How many of you seen uh, a video online that was very, very popular of a little boy 
Um, so what happened was he called his mom to pick him up before lunch at school. This boy lives somewhere in Tennessee. And he said, Mom, the boys are mistreating me. People are really not nice. Other students to me, just please and come get me. So she comes and picks him up from school, and he asked her if he can do a little video and just record it. And she just pulled out her cell phone and recorded a little video of him for a couple minutes where he's just crying. He's saying, why do the people do this to me? Why do they bully me? Why do they mistreat me? Why do they call me names? Why do they say that I'm ugly, that I have no friends? And he goes on for a few minutes, and uh, his mom just posted this video online on Facebook, and uh, people started reacting to it. And uh, she posted it on Friday, December 8th, and three days later, by Sunday, 21 million people looked at this video, and thousands and thousands, they uh, posted this video on their social networks. And it wasn't just regular people that watched this uh, video. It was celebrities, it was professional athletes, it was uh, media stars. They looked at the story, and they started uh, sharing with everyone, and really talking about what happened to this little boy, helpless boy. And this boy who was bullied, uh, he finally got some recognition. Uh, finally, somebody heard his story. And many, many famous people started uh, writing uh, messages to him, to his mom, and encouraging him and saying that they love him, that they think he's a great kid, that he's very beautiful, and they started just showing his, uh, their support to this, uh, to this teenager. People encouraged him. They offered protection to him. Um, there was uh, an actor who plays in one of the famous movies or a whole series, um, uh, Captain America. He called him or, or wrote him a message and said, hey, I invite you to uh, preview the movie that, that before it comes out in theater, you will watch this movie with me. Uh, and there was a fundraising that was started for his uh, future education and thousands of dollars was raised and everything looks great and it seems that uh, yes yeah, society can come together and adore somebody and can help somebody uh, my question is to all of us today is how long do you think this attention will last uh, how many of these promises will truly be fulfilled i hope they will but i'm not sure and uh, his mother when she looked at all of these millions and millions of people who started uh, you know supporting her son she thanked everyone on social media, and she said, I thank you, but I really have to work hard to teach something my son, teach him what true acceptance is and what attention is. And even though sometimes it looks like society can come together and, you know, and, and do something for somebody, uh, many times it's just showing somebody attention. But truly to accept somebody, to adore somebody, I believe it comes from a heavenly father. It comes from outside of us, from outside of our sinful nature. It's kind of interesting. I can relate to this teenager a little bit. When we moved to the United States, I was 13 years old and I started middle school. And nobody physically abused me or anything, but I definitely was mis mistreated in certain ways, you know, for not speaking English very well. And, you know, unfortunately, that didn't change much. But... Um, and other things, uh, just, you know, being different, you come from different culture, from different family, and it's uh, hard to fit in. And I remember struggling through my teenage years, really to, to feel acceptance, to feel adored, to feel loved, even though my parents did a great job in, in everything that they could have done. But this, again, shows that to be adored, that's not something that people can give you. There's something that has to happen inside of you, as something that has to be changed inside of you to really know what your true value is as a human, as a, as a person. And uh, there was a time growing up, going to church, what I, when I realized that I was being recognized, when I realized that I was being accepted. And it's not by my classmates who still uh, made fun of me, but it was by Heavenly Father who created me and who loved me. And now I didn't need the encouragement of people to tell me, you know, that I'm okay, that I'm great, that I'm doing, uh, doing good. I didn't need protection from, you know, somebody else, from my fellow classmates. I didn't need an actor who plays Captain America to call me or tweet me or, or Facebook me and tell me, hey, listen, you're my body, you know, everything's going to be okay. Uh, there came a point in my life where I accepted the true superhero Jesus Christ, the hero of the universe, that said, 
I will protect you. I love you. You matter to me. And that changed my life. And his birth and his life we're celebrating today uh, and adoring Jesus Christ. And I don't have to worry about that his support will not last for a year or two or until the rest of my life. His promises are true forever. And I don't have to uh, worry that his promises won't be fulfilled in my life because I know that his word is true and I see evidence in my life that he's faithful to be with me all the time. And it's interesting, just like Keaton, when he received all of this support into his life, he can still sit at home tomorrow and say, you know what, I think all of these nice people, they're just being nice to me, but uh, I don't know if they really mean it. And he can still be depressed, and he can still be bullied, and he can still have just uh, uh, feel down throughout his life because he doesn't believe that these people truly mean what they say. The same thing with accepting Christ, with accepting the promises of God. Unless you believe it, you will live all your life and you will feel that you're bullied, that you're not worth anything. So it's interesting that, you know, somebody who's an atheist, they, will, they would say, listen, you know, all your idea, all your faith is, 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 is pointless. But if you look at it this way, it doesn't matter if a person promises something to you, that they will protect you and love you and they adore you, or God himself does. There's still a faith, uh, a step of faith that you have to take. Unless you truly believe that these people mean it, whether it's people or it's God himself, nothing will change in your life. Jesus, he was adored when he was born. But later he died in the hands of the bullies of that time. And he knows what it means to be bullied. He knows what it means to suffer. But he also knows what it truly means to be adored and loved because he received it from his heavenly father. Now, when we celebrate in Christmas, we have to make the decision for ourselves as well. Is the source of our adoration in our life, is it going to be social media and somebody liking us on Facebook or is it going to be God the Father? Is the source to adore somebody else in our life? Is it going to be social standards that change? Or is it going to be the help of God Almighty? And as we're concluding today, I just really want to challenge all of us. First of all, I want to challenge myself and challenge everyone who calls themselves a Christian. If you truly accept the adoration of your Heavenly Father, then we have a responsibility to live up to that calling just going back to Keaton can you imagine if with after having all of this support from these people millions of people around this country and around the globe if tomorrow he goes to school and starts making fun of somebody else I mean people will be outraged they will say what in the world is going on I mean yesterday we showed all this support to this little boy who was crying on Facebook and saying that he's being mistreated and we just want to help him and he turns around and and starts doing this to somebody else? How can that be? Unfortunately, a lot of times, people can look at us and ask the same question. How can you, experiencing God's love and respect, how can you turn around and mistreat somebody? We are called to much higher standard in Jesus Christ. And I would just like to encourage us to really pay attention, to really uh, have the message of Christ and Christmas transform us in our life. So we are not mistreating somebody else. We're not bullying somebody else. So we're not gossiping about our friends, whether it's in youth group, at church, or in school. So we're not putting pressure on somebody who's below us at work. So we're not mistreating our wives or husbands. We're called to be much different. If we truly experience what it means to be adored by our Heavenly Father, He expects that from us. So we would show the same to those who are around us. And the second challenge to those who maybe you never received Christ as your Savior. Maybe you just know that there is Christmas. Yes, you like all of the activities. Yes, you like everything. But unless you truly experience the adoring of Heavenly Father, I don't believe you will find ever in your life anyone who can truly adore you and love and respect and you would truly feel what it means so my challenge to everyone today who has not received christ who didn't surrender their life to him to do that and i know that we can you know ask 
for people to come forward. We can ask people to raise their hands or fill out a note. Yes, I would like to know Jesus. Yes, I would like to give my life to him. But really, it really happens in your heart. Really, you make a decision. You say, just like many people, they can promise many things to me that it will be nice, that it will support me and help me. There's a God of the universe that reveals himself in scriptures and he says that he loves me, that he adores me, and that he wants the best for me. And all you have to do is just where you are, say, you know what? I will put my faith on that. I will research more about the God of the Bible. I will research more and see what Christ has done for me, what his claims were, and see how that changes my life. I know it changed my life. And I just, I just challenge everyone to live according to what Jesus has done, how he transformed us. And if you haven't done that, personally in your life to seek him and you'll see how he will transform your life as well and this conclusion we'll just get up together and we'll pray and uh, we'll be concluding our service today please uh, get get up to your feet and we'll pray together thank you so the shepherds hurried off and found mary and joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger when they had seen him they spread the word concerning what had had been told to them about this child and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Glory be to God, and good evening. Uh, I stand before you tonight with uh, four invitations, so please hear me out, and um, we'll go from there. Uh, but before I do these, uh, tell you these invitations, I'd like to read the Word of God, uh, Matthew chapter 2, uh, verses 1 and 2. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who is born, who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. 
So we see that uh, there were two types of people at the time when Jesus was born. There were people who came to worship him, who came to adore him, and there were people who were disturbed because of his birth. They were disturbed that another king was born. So my first invitation today for you is to rejoice and adore our Jesus Christ. Rejoice and adore him as a baby, but not only that, as a savior and as a king uh, that is coming soon. My second invitation is for us to go tell it to other people so that other people know about this king. And like we sang this song, go tell it on the mountain. Tell it to everyone. Shout to everyone that we have the Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ. And um, my third invitation is for us to, all of us, after this church service or this evening is over, we would go downstairs and there are some uh, sandwiches and some sweets that are, have been prepared, some coffee, some tea, uh, and we will have some fellowship together downstairs. Uh, so this would be uh, everyone who is here, please go downstairs after the service. And my fourth invitation is for us to stand together and pray for the, uh, for the end of the service for blessing for the rest of the evening and for the blessing for uh, the rest of the, the week. Please stand to our feet and let us pray.